Welcome back to Brazil. <laughs> so this is Alex from Guatemala. And um, as we've seen in, the, in this project, virtually all analyzed landscapes progress in FLR de largely depends on active participation of the stakeholders. And um, this holds true also in the Chimaltenango Islands of Guatemala. I think I did that. <laughs> okay, so in this context, the following lesson was identified. When we have supportive policy and regulatory framework, it plays important role in mobilizing stakeholder support. So, Alex, can you tell us about your experiences with mobilizing stakeholders in support of FLR in Guatemala? Of course, thank you. Um, Guatemala um, set the basis for a strong forest um, sector in the 90s, thanks uh, in part to international aid. So we created a forestry law, a forest uh, policy, and uh, the, an autonomous um, uh, institution was, was created to be the authority. Uh, with, uh, it's, it's a very stable um, institution. I don't work for it, so I, I can say it, and I'm not paying lip service. Um, and then uh, there was support also for education at the technical and at the um, university level. And very importantly, um, an incentive program. Um, so this really has um, led to participation from the public uh, sector through municipalities, but also the private sector, communities, um, and small land um, owners. But even that was a limitation in the past. Uh, a lot of people in Guatemala don't have land titles. Uh, so they created a special incentive program for land holders. So I think that really opened the, the door for, for people to participate. Um, so in the people we interviewed on the field for this, um, for this study, for this snapshot uh, analysis, uh, we found that um, the national uh, or the government program was very important to engage um, some of the stakeholders. Uh, but technical support was one key factor of this involvement. And even those who were not part of the incentive program uh, have been getting that technical support from NGOs especially, including the Climate Change Institute that, that I work for. So technical support has been key for it. Uh, maybe a limitation that uh, people have, people said in the interviews that they found is, um, <clears throat> sorry, especially for um, smallholders uh, in the rural areas, they find the processes to access the incentive program uh, rather bureaucratic. And also there is, uh, by law, you need to have a registered forestry consultant to write the plan, even if it is a small plot, um, or to sign it. And that, of course, is, uh, they consider it costly. So that's one of the limitations in the engagement. But so technical support is key. Thank you. Now, an, another question. So given the circumstances that we have in the region, what will it take to significantly accelerate FLR progress in the Chimaltenango Islands and even beyond in the whole of Guatemala? Yeah. Uh, so we found that um, many of the people we interviewed were willing to participate and to do more um, forest uh, landscape restoration. And uh, they, they said that technical support would be needed. So I think creating um, a strong team of uh, professionals or uh, technical people who will reach the rural areas, because that's where uh, most of uh, the opportunities are, for uh, forest landscape restoration. So reaching out to the rural areas and providing that technical support, even if it is for the incentive programs or not, um, I think that that would be key. Um, and that, that would really uh, help. And the other aspect is, of course, for the small uh, landowners or holders, uh, subsidizing maybe that, that requirement of having a, a professional right um, a registered consultant and write the, the report. Um, and lastly, also creating communities of practice at the local level. We've had for the past at least five years a national roundtable for land, uh, for sorry, for forest uh, uh, restoration. 
Um, so we have mapped the country and the opportunities have been mapped. And, uh, but we need that to reach the local level also. And so there are a couple of examples where that is happening at the local level uh, with the help of WRI in, in Guatemala, the World Resources Institute, we fostered that uh, creation of the roundtable in southern Guatemala. And that's really involving uh, indigenous communities, private sector, universities, and municipal governments. And so they're sharing experiences and really having this momentum, building this momentum for forest uh, landscape restoration. Right. Gracias, Alex. So thank Gracias. you for those insights.